Hi everyone and welcome back to Simply Strength. In today's video I'd like to outline five key personality traits or characteristics that in my opinion will assist you in experiencing life to its maximum from both a career and personal perspective. Of course these are not the only beneficial attributes but they will certainly be useful. I'd also like to add that like many of you out there I would still consider my own development as gestational in nature with so much more to be done in the coming years and I'll be striving to continue that until my final breath. This model that I've created was inspired by the five P's of marketing, product, price, promotion, place, and people. I found over the past few years, and particularly in relation to recent events in my life, the same themes and attitudes tend to crop up with regards to success in one's life, career, and personal development. I'm going to discuss each of these characteristics or traits in detail and provide examples from my own life and those of others, such that you'll be able to internalize the information and adapt it for your own needs and circumstances. I'd love to hear your own stories and experiences with relevance to these attributes in the comments, but I'll remind you of that nearer the end. With that said, let's begin. Passion. The will to win, the desire to succeed, the urge to reach your full potential. These are the keys that will unlock the door to personal excellence. Confucius. Although these traits are in no particular order, I certainly regard passion or enthusiasm to be nearer the top. Having passion for your work takes the effort away in most cases, and it becomes more of a life calling. You forget all about the reasons for doing something and get drawn into the task and immersed in what you're doing. I can provide numerous examples to illustrate how passion is truly important if you are to realize your own dreams and ambitions. At school, I absolutely despised maths, numbers, and statistics. I had no love for the area and the purpose of algebra formulas and calculus was lost on me. This was partly because I disliked the teacher, but also with hindsight I just wasn't ready during those years and the fire within me was simply a mere ember. Fast forward a few years to the age of about 21 and I was just starting a degree, having quit my mundane job, again a pursuit that I hated. By this age I was ready to return to study and had developed a huge passion and enthusiasm for my area, such that I spent a massive amount of time reading, working on assignments and so forth eventually attaining a high degree classification. When it came time to do the statistical elements in my thesis, I had a real love for the topic and the process of interpreting and analysing data. I went away and read numerous books on statistical analysis to truly understand the process and concepts. The best aspect of this was that it wasn't boring like I remembered it at school. I could see purpose and better still, I remembered and internalised the information, whereas before there was no hope of that happening. The latent passion that wasn't being directed into my maths class at the age of 14 or 15 was instead being diverted away into extracurricular activities. I had not long developed a real enthusiasm and fondness for rock and metal music at this time and just earned enough money to buy my first proper guitar with an amplifier. It was a Mexican-made Fender Stratocaster that I still have to this day. I poured so many hours into learning the instrument and playing along with songs, trying to improvise solos from my favourite bands coming up with riffs, getting a band together at school. Honestly, I dumped so much time into this pursuit, far more each day than I put into my schoolwork, or even spent at school on some days. Some days I would practice as much as 10 hours, especially at weekends. The thing is, it never felt like work. Although I was technically, quote, working, per se, I'd started having one guitar lesson a week and my playing began to improve further and further. These lessons were group lessons with other students, that I didn't know or really speak to. But over a few months I became aware that I was accelerating through material and getting more advanced, whereas others were not. I purely put this down to the sheer amount of time and practice I was doing, as I've never regarded myself as innately musical or talented. And I have my own ideas about talent and uh, nature versus nurture, such that, in my opinion, genetic endowment in any field doesn't matter, or it does matter only slightly, it will always take a back seat to hard graft and quality practice with the right team around you, but more on that in another video. So, if I'd placed the same investment and passion into my maths class, I have no doubt I would have achieved high grades in it and the past could have been very different. However, I have no regrets about how it all panned out. I've learnt a lot from the experience and I now take all of my passions very seriously and sink huge amounts of time and effort into them. After all, 
We are only on this planet a very short time, and I am distinctly aware, through being an agnostic atheist, that there is nothing after death. But that again is another video for another time. My message to you is to treat whatever you do, whatever you are passionate about, with immense respect. If you enjoy weight training, for example, don't do some bullshit program or simply turn up and go through the motions. Walk into the gym like you're going to tear the place apart and strive to better your performance at all times. Learn about nutrition and put together a consistent, well thought out plan. In other areas, let's say you have a fondness for business and want to become an entrepreneur. Educate yourself, watch YouTube videos about trading or property development, attend workshops, seminars, led by people who know who are in the game and also get yourself a mentor. This is extremely important, and you can check out my mentorship video for further information on that. We are blessed to live in an age where knowledge and information is out there. You just need the drive, passion and ambition to grab it. My experiences have demonstrated to me the importance of having passion in what you do, and I strongly urge all of you to find as many vocations, life goals or callings as you can. Pursue them all with a fervent passion and enthusiasm, and always remember that the more you know, the more aware you are of how little you know. The best teachers remain students their entire lives. Thus, you should always remain the eternal student and never stop seeking knowledge and enlightenment. Perseverance. Character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. Only through experience of trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened, ambition inspired and success achieved. Helen Keller. Over the last couple of years, I've found that perseverance is a supremely virtuous attribute to have. In life, I can attest that 90% of the time we get rejected or receive the undesirable outcome. These rejections can batter the spirit and the soul, and it can be almost irresistible at times to throw in the towel, give up and try something else. Now, I'm not against anyone being as diverse as they can and having as many strings to their bow as possible. In fact, I recommend it. However, I would urge everyone to develop resilience and a positive attitude. Referring back to my musical pursuits at school, my band and I eventually recorded a demo CD in a proper studio. A wonderful experience just hanging out with your friends and recording songs that I composed and we all contributed to in some way. Although that was a great snapshot in time, a fantastic memory I think back to, nothing came of the CD and nobody got in touch with us. At the time I couldn't understand it, but it just was not good enough. If you are not exposed to rejection, you don't develop the adaptation to it. You don't develop the hard outer shell that we all need to be successful. Subsequently, we also entered a Battle of the Bands type competition at school. Two of them, in fact, and we came second both times. Later, we found out that it had been rigged as the family members of the winning band had judged it, but I took it personally. At this time, I was looking for validation from others, and fortunately for me, over the last 10 years, I now rely on no external sources of validation, just myself. More recently, over the past two years, I've been trying desperately hard to get a full-time job in my area of expertise, having been on part-time contracts for about two years since graduating. These jobs are highly sought after and competitive, with about 100 applicants per position. I've applied about seven or eight times and got to interview five times. After each negative outcome, I've gone away and brushed myself off, then planned how I can improve myself, my skill set, and my CV to get the role. I'll admit that after the fifth rejection, it was getting pretty old, but recently I interviewed again and was awarded the job. Instead of elation, it's a feeling of sweet relief to finally get the position I was after, but it also serves to be a powerful lesson. Never stop striving for what you want in life. It might sound funny, but I liken it to a scene in a war movie, like Platoon where Sergeant Elias is running away from the Viet Cong and he's getting shot, but he keeps trying to run, the only thing stopping him being death. Or Boromir in Lord of the Rings, who keeps fighting despite getting pierced by arrows repeatedly. I don't think it's ridiculous to liken each arrow or bullet to an instance of rejection, hatred or scorn. Keep fighting, never say die, don't give up and maintain a laser-like focus on your life goals. Patience Patience, persistence and perspiration make an unbeatable combination for success. Napoleon Hill The old saying that patience is a virtue certainly rings true. As anything worth having usually requires hard work, a substantial time investment as well as consistent effort to attain. With that said, if you look after the process, then the outcome will usually take care of itself. Whatever pursuits, pastimes and hobbies you take up, do consider that mastery takes time and you will need to be patient. The journey is often the best part. 
Let's take a classical musician whose end goal is to be the lead violin soloist in a prestigious orchestra, such as the Czech Philharmonic or what have you. If this kind of prestige came easy, with little effort, it would surely not be worth accomplishing in the first place. No, this is going to take years of study and work, whatever age you start. In fact, in my view, the starting age is irrelevant, but again, that's a separate topic. The key thing is that a considerable amount of investment will be required to learn technique, scales, musical theory, phrasing, vibrato form, and all of the other elements that contribute to being a top-class performer and musician. A different example. Let's say you want to be a leading researcher in biochemistry or oncology. Regardless of your preliminary education at school, you're going to have to get your undergraduate degree, master's, PhD, and then will likely have to do postdoctoral work before you get anywhere near that sort of post. And there's nigh on 10 years already. Add to that building up your research skills, portfolio, and publications. You have a considerable amount of work and effort, but if you were to be patient and work your ass off, it would certainly be possible with the right mindset. In more blue-collar type jobs, it would again take a fair bit of time. I remember a friend of mine left school without going to college and he did an apprenticeship in electrical engineering whilst learning on the job. After seven years, and before we fell out of contact, he was only just starting to make real money and had started to build a solid reputation and portfolio. The core message here with this attribute is that you need hard work, passion and commitment, but allied to that you also require patience. If the reward was instant, we would all be doing it, and it's those who are truly patient and work their asses off who receive rewards. Planning. Plans are nothing. Planning is everything. Dwight D. Eisenhower. It's no good having a dream, ambition, goal or a plan without a fundamental understanding of how to achieve it. We all know people that talk a good game, that openly state they're going to do something but then never deliver. I think this stems from a lack of knowledge about where to start, or simply a lack of willpower to get cracking and move things forward. For the past few years, I've routinely updated my overarching plan for the future. This isn't set in stone, but it's a clear outline of the job I eventually want, the type of income, the hobbies or pursuits I have, the qualifications and accreditations and so forth. It even includes more personal things such as the places I've been on holiday. I've lived a sheltered life until now and not left the UK unfortunately, but this leaves so many places on the bucket list to explore through travelling and I've formulated that list and will hopefully soon be going away to America or Canada or one of those places. So much to see and do. But For example, with my recent successful job application, I've ticked that off my plan and there are now arrows pointing towards the next target. If the situation changes, then so does my plan. I feel that this framework provides me with direction so that I don't just coast through life. This stems from my understanding that I'm only here once, and as long as I have my health, fitness and drive, I need to optimise my time and truly live the fullest life possible. So I'd strongly urge you all to formulate your own plan, wherever you are in life, and start putting together a battle strategy for achieving these goals. Are there qualifications that you might need? Are there conditions that need to be met? Will you need to relocate? You should then create several divergent routes that you might take as backups or alternatives. Put the plan somewhere safe as it's personal to you, or save it in electronic form on your PC. I urge you to check it again every few months to monitor your progress. Another aspect that might want inclusion in your planning is a list of SMART goals. That's specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and timely. While sometimes I think that setting unattainable or unrealistic goals can make you reach even greater heights, in the main, you should follow this paradigm in your goal setting. By putting together a list of short-term goals and ticking them off once they're done, the long-term goals will come sooner than you think. Never underestimate the value of planning. It's absolutely crucial for many people and I'm sure it will be a benefit to you. Purpose As far as we can discern, the sole purpose of human existence is to kindle a light in the darkness of mere being. Carl Jung Last but my no means least, purpose is also a crucial attribute to underpin your attainment and self-improvement. You should address each worthwhile task or goal with determination and resolve, otherwise what's the point? This could involve anything you can think of, be it reading, writing books or novels, composing music, doing video game reviews, absolutely anything that you think is going to add value for people. This can border on the obsessive, I understand, but if you look at anybody that has attained success, they have demonstrated this tendency in abundance. Stephen King writes 2,000 words a day, regardless. Elite athletes are training every single day. 
Johnny Wilkinson is a great example. He was always out on the kicking field, practicing his kicking, and often wouldn't go home uh, unless he'd made every single kick between the posts. If you like to review books you've read, for example, don't just rate them on Amazon or Goodreads without putting together a review. I mean, I will often read the reviews after I've read the book to start discussion, and this ultimately adds value to the experience for the betterment of everybody. I've seen numerous people on Amazon that just rate the book or item and that's it. Personally, if I feel strongly enough to rate something, then I'll post a review of some description. My point is that purpose is the key and underpins many of the traits I've discussed so far. What would your mindset be if you were told that you had 24 hours to live? This is what you should be mindful of. We are all simply bullets, fired from a celestial gun, all on staggered and discreet trajectories toward oblivion, and it's up to us all to make a lasting impact. I've spoken before about legacy, so I won't talk about it in any great detail here, but one really should try to leave behind evidence of their contribution to humanity in some form, and the cybersphere makes this possible more than ever. So what are you waiting for? Get out there and start making waves. I hope you all enjoyed this video and found my framework useful. I'm very keen to hear your thoughts on these attributes, particularly your own experiences and success from following them. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment as always. Your continued support and enthusiasm is thoroughly appreciated. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.